So I stumbled on the question online where someone asked if it is morally okay for a married woman to have children with another man if her husband does say. What do you guys think? Hold that thought. First, let me welcome you to this episode of So This Happened, where we highlight and review stories that made a buzz recently. I'm your host, Margaret Osazua Efuge. Now, let's delve into this gist proper. Gospel singer Samuel Koso recently made a public confession to his wife after he cheated on her with one American based lady identified as African Dog when he traveled. According to Okoso, it was an unfortunate incident which happened on his recent trip to the United States of America. Being apologetic, if I say so myself, he accepted that his actions were inappropriate and he was really ashamed that he caused his dear wife and family pain. He also appealed to all that have been part of his ministry that he was truly sorry for disappointing them. Now this matter, though serious, still seem eh. Not until anti-side chick, African doll, decided to speak up, I mean, should I say grant an interview, where she spoke about how she knows that what they did was wrong, how they both didn't use protection, how she feels they didn't handle it properly by ignoring her, as according to her, no woman on earth will feel okay being abandoned or thrown to the side. Then she now went on to say she will keep the baby as she doesn't believe in abortion. She even quoted the scriptures to justify herself. She said, let he that is without sin Cast the first stone. She even continued by saying that it wasn't her intention to hurt anybody, oh, but to bring life to the situation. Ah, we're done. We're done. You're doing well. Mm. The two both of you that are supposedly adults had an affair and didn't think to use protection. One, mm -mm. you are not seeking attention by calling him out. Ah, you didn't know that he has a wife, Abby. Sometimes we ask ourselves the question. What is going on in this our world? How much exactly does a man's life cost? Because in the case of this boss, who thought his apprentice's life was lesser than a thousand naira? Hey, is something crazy, oh? Ha! An 11-year-old apprentice identified as Sunday has been beaten to death by his boss for allegedly stealing 1,000 naira in Ogba. 1,000. It was reported that the suspect, Uchechuku, aka Aloy Omojesu, has taken to his heels, leaving Sunday's lifeless body in the hands of his fellow apprentices who reside with him. According to reports, Sunday was suspected of theft when the manager of Uchechuku's gas business, Blessing, discovered that the sum of 1,000 naira was missing at the close of sales on Saturday. Uchechuku and his other apprentices were said to have suspected Sunday after he gave an unsatisfactory response when questioned by the manager. Now, according to an eyewitness, he said when Blessing asked him how 1,000 naira went missing, he said the money was with a customer who did not complete payment for refilling gas. Now, Blessing told Sunday, follow me, let's go and meet the customer and collect the money. But when they got there, the customer said the complete money was paid. The customer, however, said the money he owed them was for another item he bought in the shop. But Sunday never told them that he sold an item to the customer that Saturday today in the first place. Now Sunday came and their boss got to know about what happened and when he gave no reasonable explanation, the boss asked Blessing to take him home. According to Godwin, Uchechuku began torturing Sunday with a wire when he got home around that 10 p.m. Subsequently, Godwin and another apprentice, Stanley, left for the backyard when their colleague's plea for mercy was ignored. Now, while they were at the backyard, they heard Sunday screaming for help, but their boss continued to beat him and didn't stop till he stepped out to meet them at the backyard around 1 a.m. He would just calculate the hours, so calculate the hours. Now, when they didn't hear Sunday's voice again, they thought he had already had his bath and slept. But when they saw him lying motionless on the floor, they still thought ah, he had slept, even though they saw blood on his body. Now, here's where it gets fishy. Their boss later told them to pack about 1 million naira he had at home and said he wanted them to quickly go to the shop to keep it. Now the three of them embarked on this journey except Sunday. Hmm. They left the house around 1 a.m. But when they got there, their boss said, hmm, I forgot the keys at home. Ingwanu, he left the keys at home. Now Godwin said the suspect told Stanley to wait at the shop while he followed him home to get the keys. Now he noted that on their way home, their boss confided in him and told him that Sunday needed urgent treatment. Hmm. To cut the long story short, Uchechuku knew that he had done something wrong and he looked for a way to run and guess what? 
he found it. After fleeing, the boys knew something must be really wrong and immediately they went back home and guess what? They met Sunday's corpse. They immediately raised an alarm and reported to the ballet who assisted them in reporting to the police. Confirming the report, a chief in the area who pled to be anonymous said the angry youth protesting Sunday's death boggled Uchechuku's shop and carted away with property as the culprit is presently on the run. As of the time of filing this report, the state's police public relations officer, CSP Adekunle Ajishebutu, did not comment on the matter when contacted but vowed to get back with more details. So tell me, what happened to taking the money from his salary? What happened to punishment? Why beat him to death over what? A thousand naira? You should have just laid him off if you didn't believe him in the first place. Killing him is wicked now, mean, terrible, name it, evil. I pray that the Lord catches up with you. Honestly, I really pray. Nigerians almost shattered this table on this my story. Ha! Free DNA testing care. Hmm. Anyways, the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Olorunimbe Mamura, on Tuesday debunked news that the federal government planned to start conducting free DNA testing for Nigerians. As it was earlier reported that Nigerians went on Twitter with claims that the minister had said government hospitals and clinics would conduct free DNA tests. Reacting to the news, a tweet with the username ChijoK, PhD, was among the first to tweet about a free DNA test attributing the statement to a health minister. He said, there will be free DNA tests in government hold hospitals from June this year. Omotaya of Lagos says, Nigeria government just announced that starting from June this year, DNA tests will be run for free of charge at government hospitals. No more fathering kids that are in years. A big win for Nigerian men and faithful women. At Max Vicious says, with this news on free conducting of DNA tests in government hospitals and clinics, the high courts are really going to get very busy in the coming months. However, the minister while speaking with our correspondent said, this is a false claim. At no point did I say this. The claims about free DNA tests are not true. Ha! This man has just single-handedly shattered hearts. Like, this is something worse than breakup. We have come to the end of this episode on So Will This Happen. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe on all of our social media platforms. My name is Margaret Sazawa. Don't forget, bye for now.